Welcome to ECE 761 Robotics, lecture number four, forward kinematics. Now, forward kinematics is how to go from the base to the tip of the robot to find out where the tip is. To do that, you go reference frame to reference frame. Now, there's a standard for defining reference frames so that each robotics engineer comes up with the same answer for figuring out where the tip is. The standard is you to go from reference frame one to next reference frame. You rotate about the x-axis, that's a twist. Then you move along the x-axis, rotate about the z-axis, move along the z-axis. That defines the translation matrix from joint 1 to joint i plus 1. That's rotations and translations. Uh, specifically, the transformation to go from uh, reference frame 1 to reference frame 0 is you first rotate about the x-axis alpha radians, that's a twist. Then it displaces about the x-axis, rotate about the z-axis, Displace about the z-axis, that takes me to the next reference frame. Multiplying it out, I get this. This is a transformation matrix to go from reference frame 1 to reference frame 0. That's the subroutine transform posted on Bison Academy. Uh, for example, suppose I want to find out what's the transformation matrix to go from joint 1 to joint 0, given that I twist by 90 degrees, A0 is 50 centimeters, D1 is 40 centimeters, and the angle is 30 degrees. If I throw that in transform, I get this. That's the transformation matrix to go from reference frame 1 to reference frame 0. Inverted, I go from 0 to 1. Repeating this process for joints 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and so on, will eventually take you from the base to the tip. Now, there are several types of joints. There's translational joints and rotational joints. If you have a compound joint that can do several things, the trick is to split it up into separate joints. Each one just does one thing, a translation or a rotation. The net result is you just have translations and rotations for a, a robot. The convention for defining the reference frames is this. You start at reference frame zero. That's your earth reference. You then go from joint to joint along the robot, adding one for each one. So reference frame one, reference frame two, and so on. The res reference frames are defined so that the z-axis is where you rotate. The x-axis is the closest point between one z-axis and the next frames, and x points to the next z-axis. Uh, the twist is the rotation about the z-axis, and the rotation theta is typically how robot moves. This is the turning about it. So to go from reference frame 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 and so on, Notice I'm only moving along the x and z directions. So the procedure to define the joints, and this gets kind of tricky. Sometimes you have to draw this robot a couple times to, to get it right, is you first identify the joint axis. Draw an infinite line along each axis. Identify the perpendicular lines between the axes. The point of intersection is where the reference frame is defined. z points along the axis. x points to the next axis and y comes from x cross y is z. You assign x is 0 to the earth reference frame, and then start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The 0 position is when all the x-axes line up. And a couple link parameters. There is a, the distance from z, i to z i plus 1, measured along the x-axis. Alpha is the twist. d is the displacement. Theta is the rotation. Those four parameters define each link. For a robot, if you define those for each joint, you define the robot. I'm going to go through a couple examples. Let's take the first example being a human finger. If you have a finger, you can sit there and, and bend it at three different joints. So here's the, the knuckle, first joint, second joint, fingertip. Come up with a way to model this. To do that, I need to first define the reference frames and the zero position. To do that, if this is my earth reference, I'm going to move along the z-axis to get to the, get to the knuckle. That rotates. Um, I'm going to define a second axis, z2, which is rotated 90 degrees. I rotate about the z2 axis. That's the knuckle rotating. I then move to the next joint that rotates about the z-axis. The fingertip rotates about the z-axis, and that takes me to the tip. In zero position, all the x's face the same direction. They're all facing right. And why is they didn't draw? 
y is not really necessary. You never move in the y direction. Plus, y comes from x cross y is z. And in this case, all the y's are pointing up, but I really don't care. Once I define the zero position, I can specify the parameters. The twist is the change in the z direction. So going from zero to one, z is in the same direction, so there's no twist. One to two, I rotate 90 degrees about the x-axis. Two to three, three to four, four to five, they're all parallel. Um, a is the distance you move along the z-axis. So going from zero to one. So A is the distance I move along the x-axis from frame i minus one to i. So here I move zero in the x direction, zero in the x direction, one to two. Two to three, I move 50. That's right here. Three to four, I move 40. And four to five, I move 30. D is the distance you go from along the z-axis, going from i minus one to i. So D1 is going from zero to one. That's this distance, 10. Then all the other Ds are zero. And the angle of rotation, in this case, is gonna be your theta one, theta two, theta three for these joints. Once you define the robot, essentially this matrix defines what the robot is. I can simulate it. The program RRR is a program where I pass the robot parameters. That's your theta one, theta two, theta three. The tip we'll use a little bit later. That's for animation so I can see what the tip is doing. Define these four parameters in red and that specifies the robot. The way the program works is once these are specified, I can calculate the transformation matrix going from joint zero to one, one to two, two to three, and so on. I can then take a point in the earth reference frame, figure out where it is from the first reference frame, the second, the third, fourth, draw a line, I get a stick figure to represent the robot. In addition, it also returns the final tip position of the robot. To illustrate that, let's run the program. If I define the zero position, that's the angle theta one, theta two, theta three. There's the tip, uh, for now I don't care. If I type that in, this shows me the zero position for the robot and where the tip is. Is that 120, X, Y, and Z. Uh, if I want to change it, so let's try theta 1 is 1 radian. Now theta 2 is minus 1 radian. And theta 3 is 1 radian. Notice I'm calculating the tip position for each one of those, as well as drawing the robot. In addition, I can sit there and have the robot follow a certain path. For example, I'm going to have theta 1 go from 0 to 90 degrees. Then theta two goes zero to 90 degrees. Then theta three goes zero to 90 degrees. This is where the tip comes into play. The green line shows the tip of the robot as it moves. So that's the first robot. Second example, try to define the reference frames for this robot. Here, the base rotates. It then has an arm that spins up and down like your shoulder. Now, now it has a prismatic joint. A, the tip will slide in and out. To do that, first we draw it in terms of the axis in zero position. This is the Earth reference, uh, Z0 is pointing up. To get to the base, I'll go to Z1, that rotates about Z1. Z1 then goes to Z2. This is the shoulder going up and down. I'll then go to the tip, long length L3. The parameters of the robot then are going to be for the twist, going between zero and one, there's no twist. One to two, that's 90 degree twist about the x-axis. Two to three is no twist. Uh, your a's are distance along the x-axis. So here a is zero, a is zero, a is L3. D is distance along the z-axis. So that's L1, zero, and zero. And Q is the rotation. I first rotate about theta one, that's Q1, then rotate about Z2, that's theta two, and there's no other rotation. So this defines the second robot. Uh, to do that, just change these, this matrix, and I now have the second robot in there. And here notice the W, I pass three parameters. That's gonna be your theta one, theta two displacement. So I can now check that. If I now call that robot the RRP, Rotation, rotation, prismatic. 
this is zero position. If I move the third joint to 50 centimeters, that's the displacement. Uh, make the first one one radian. There's your XYZ. The second link, one radian as well, pointing up. Or I can sit there and uh, spin the different joints. Here I'm going to move uh, the displacement L3 from 1 to 50, then rotate theta 1, 0 to 90 degrees, then rotate theta 2. So do that. Here's L3 going from 0 to 50. Now rotate about theta 1. With the green line is the tip position as the ro robot took this path. And then theta 2. So that's an RRP robot. Third example is here's another RRR robot. Doesn't necessarily make sense, but you can still handle it. I spin about the Z axis here. I then rotate about Z2, and this last one rotates about Z3. Find the reference frames for that robot. To do that, it kind of helps to redraw it. And here I added extra reference frames. It doesn't hurt to add extra ones. I could actually do this with three, but it's a little bit simpler to see with four. So here's my Earth reference, X0, Z0. I go up to Z1, X1, and I rotate about the Z axis. I'll now rotate 90 degrees and take you to reference frame 3. This one rotates about Z3. I'll then come over here to reference frame 4. That rotates about Z4. Or, and then move out there, out to the tip, where it rotates. Uh, the parameters then, for the twist, going from 0 to 1 is no twist. 1 to 2 is 90 degrees. Then no twist, no twist, no twist. The moving along the x-axis is 0, 0, 0, L3, 0. Moving along the z-axis is L1 in red, 0, displacement going to 2, L2 going to 3, I'm moving along z3, nothing going to 4, and L4 going to z5. So checking on that. I can now take that program, this one I called RRR3. This is zero position. X is at 30, Y is at minus 80, Z is at 50. If I rotate theta 1, I'm now here. Rotate theta 2, and rotate theta 3. And I can simulate that by taking the robot from zero position Rotate it 90 degrees about theta 1, 90 degrees about theta 2, and 90 degrees about theta 3. That's hard to see. You can just see the tip is spinning. So that's uh, forward kinematics. The homework for this week is basically repeat that for four different robots. This is a two-day assignment, so it won't be due until the following following class. It takes a little bit of time, but the goal is basically to take the program like RRR, change this matrix right here. If you get it correct, it'll show the correct motion of the robot. Again, it's a little bit tricky. Sometimes you have to redraw the circuit a couple times, but once you get this, you can then simulate the robot. A good way to verify that it works is kind of do like what we did here. Rotate the first joint, rotate the second joint, rotate the third joint, or slide if it's prismatic. And make sure that the tip is behaving correctly. So that's lecture number four for 761 Robotics.